The establishment of a National Women's League will provide a platform to inspire young girls to reach for the stars. Our game will never be the same. Collingwood. This is a great day for our football club. It's everything that we want. We want young boys and young girls to dream of wearing the black and white stripes on the MCG. And from this day on, they can. Today's a really exciting day for the Collingwood Football Club and a really important one. A day that I think supporters in the future will look back at this point and say, this was the time the Collingwood Football Club evolved into a more inclusive sporting club. It's just such an exciting time for women's football and for all the little girls running around that the dream's alive now and they can pursue something that they love. Side by side, our vision for a Collingwood women's football team is now a reality. Collingwood Football Club was at the forefront of an historic day in the AFL and women's sport with the announcement it will field a team in the inaugural National Women's Football League. As we enter our 125th year in 2017, we'll have a men's AFL team and a women's AFL team competing side by side in the country's greatest game. Well, it's been months in the making and one of the key drivers in our bid is our Women's Football Operations Manager, Meg Hutchins. Meg, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Talk us through the moment when you found out that it in fact was a reality that we'd have a women's team. Oh, well, I was called into uh, to Gary Pert's office this morning um, and he informed me of the news that uh, he received the uh, the call from AFL House saying we'd received a, a licence in the national competition. So, um, as you can tell by the look on my face, I was... Uh, I was probably relieved, but really, really happy that the uh, the dream is is now alive for all those girls that that want to become an AFL footballer for Collingwood. So, um, yeah, months and months of work have gone into it, and uh, to to have that is uh, is really, really exciting. Well, as you said, Gary Pert told you the good news. So before we find out all the logistical stuff about what the new league looks like, let's hear from Gary Pert about what women's football means for the Collingwood Football Club. So today's a really exciting day for the Collingwood Football Club and a really important one. A day that I think supporters in the future will look back at this point and say this was the time the Collingwood Football Club evolved into a more inclusive sporting club. And the modern sporting clubs now need to be diverse. We need to create the opportunity for young boys and young girls to be able to look at the Collingwood Football Club and say, one day I can play at the elite level and I want to be part of that and I want to think and I want to dream and aspire to that. And even young men and women who don't end up being players, they might end up being coaches or support staff or in the administration, but we become a diverse club that is really being demanded by our supporters and members and sponsors. So this is a really important time where we become a very inclusive club for the total community. I think it's really important for supporters to know this is something that we've been planning for the last six or seven years. So we'll actually have very independent programs running. So the new women's AFL team in no way will compromise our men's AFL team. Separate coaches, separate resources, separate facilities, and that's really exciting. This is about elite programs, so there'll be no compromise. There will be the sharing of ideas between coaches and players, and that's exciting. That's one of the great things about having both teams operating within the same facilities. But there'll certainly be no compromise. What we want is we want young men and young women looking at the Collingwood Football Club, the programs we run, and saying, one day I want to be part of that. Best coaches, best facilities, able to share ideas between men and women's elite sport. That's really exciting, and that's why we're doing this. Well, Meg, there's so much to get through a whole new league. Can you talk us through, you went into a briefing today with the AFL. What's it going to look like? Who will be competing in this new league? Yeah, so it's a, it's a purely a, a national competition now. We have um, Collingwood and, and traditional rivals Carlton joining the, uh, the, the pioneers of women's football being Melbourne and, and the Western Bulldogs in the competition. And then we have representatives from uh, the West in Fremantle, 
um, uh, the North in, uh, in the Giants and, and Brisbane Lions and also Adelaide Crows who have formed an allegiance with uh, the Northern Territory football um, competition as well. I imagine it'll be a mad scramble to secure the best players and coaches. Can you talk us through the timelines of when we can start signing players and getting our list together? Absolutely. So we're going to be um, able to submit a, a list, a wish list I guess, of five marquee nominations and then the AFL will um, then be able to grant us two of those, those five players. And then the rest really basically go into the, the draft which they nominate for in September and they get selected in October. So um, all systems go really and, and we get going in, Nove in November. November 22, pre-season training. You looking forward to it? I am, very much so. With these facilities, uh, it's incredible. So I can't wait to open up the facilities to the 25 lucky Collingwood female footballers that get the chance to train here and they're going to have access to the, to the best chance to become the the most elite athletes they can be. You mentioned 25. Let's have a look at how the list breakdown will be and, mm -hmm. and what those players will look like. Yeah, absolutely. So as I stated before, the, 20, the two marquee players, um, but then also you then draft 20 players on top of that. And then free agents, which are going to be your, um, your players that don't get drafted or the ones that are actually non-registered in, in a um, state-based competition. So you could have ex-basketballers that might uh, fall into that category and then uh, obviously your father-daughter selections uh, may become available if, uh, if that's the case within a club. Talk to us about the depth of talent across Australia. Is the, the depth there already to house this many teams in a league? Absolutely. You know, every, uh, every state has got a state-based academy going and, and obviously all the youth girls academies as well. So um, the talent is there and talent is coming at a, at a very fast rate. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what the national competition is going to to do to this to this talent and I can only imagine that's going to skyrocket. Uh, just as important as the players is the coach. Have you had interest from some of the league's better coaches already or what's where do you sit on that? Yeah absolutely I've had a lot of coaches um, who are very very high credentialed within uh, female football but also uh, men's football as well contact me to, to express interest in the coaching so that's probably one of my first priorities is to appoint the coaches and the, the assistant coaches because I guess the, the players need to have clarity as to what type of club they're coming to. Well it sounds like you're going to be one busy lady we won't take up any more of your time. Thanks so much for joining us on the show tonight and good luck. Thank you very much. Go Pies. Well, as we cap off a landmark day in the AFL and women's sport, the Collingwood Football Club is proud to be at the forefront of this historic development in our game. As Collingwood Director Elisa Camplin put it perfectly in our bid, there's more Collingwood to love.